بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها النبي إنا أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين سبحان الله Before we even consider how great, if not the greatest blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent to mankind, we need to try to contemplate one proposition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us everything for free. If anyone amongst ourselves can tell me how much he paid for his eyesight, how much he paid for his physical strength, for his memory, his ability to learn, then we can take the conversation to a different direction. But we got everything that we have. We owe everything that we have to the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we paid nothing from it. So based on that, imagine that there were no prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would come to us and say, you know what, I gave you everything for nothing that He gave me and nothing that I need from you. It is your task on your own to search the earth Try to find what pleases me, what angers me. So you do what pleases me and avoid what angers me. And if you're successful, you would be worthy on top of what I've already given you of a, an eternal life in paradise where everything is available for the wishing. Could we blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if that was the deal of how to get into Jannah? Wallahi, we couldn't. It would still be a major blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we even came to existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have sent even on top of that his directions, his halal and haram in a golden book. Huge pages that comes out of the clouds. Here's what you do, here's what you should not do, and that's it. And we try to figure on our own how to apply that practically in our own life. How to benefit ourselves with the halal and how to protect ourselves from the haram. And still would have been a major blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous, is the most merciful, and the most gracious. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent not one messenger, but a prophet after a messenger, after a prophet, to give us the guidance, how we can live the best life possible in this dunya, the most joyful, satisfying, fulfilling life, on our way to the ultimate prize of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the zenith of that blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not other than Sayyidul Khalq al Ashraf al Salim, Sayyidina Muhammad al Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Notice in the ayah, Surah Al Anbiya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say, Arsalnaka bir rahmah, or Arsalnaka bir rahmah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wama Arsalnaka illa rahmah al Alameen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He himself is a block of mercy to mankind. The seerah of Prophet Muhammad the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad is an open book of wisdom to us. The book is the Quran. But what is the wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about? Book. Kitab and Hikmah, book, Quran and wisdom. The wisdom is the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is the way Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam processed his life. So we can study, so we can benefit ourselves, so we can be the best human being that we can possibly be. <clears throat> SubhanAllah, when you study history, and you study the greatest people, you might find, let's say, Napoleon as a great military leader, or uh, a scientist that, you know, did something great in one aspect of science. Or someone who unified a country, or somebody who discovered uh, a medicine or uh, some kind of benefit that cured people. But it's impossible to find someone that was great in everything that he has done, and not only he was great, he was the greatest in everything that he has done. <clears throat> Number one. Number two, it's impossible to find someone that was as merciful, as kind, as gentle as Prophet Muhammad. And at the same time, you can never find someone that was as powerful and steadfast and as strong in fighting oppression and executing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordered to do. One of the sayings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed me with, and I said it in one of my books, is that 
Prophet Muhammad is not the greatest man that ever lived because he was the most merciful man that ever lived. Prophet Muhammad was not the greatest man that ever lived because he was the most powerful man that ever lived. Prophet Muhammad is the greatest human being that ever lived because he was simultaneously both. No one could ever achieve that before. When you look at Prophet Muhammad he was the greatest father. He was the greatest husband. He was the greatest military leader. He was the greatest spiritual leader. He was the greatest diplomat. He was the greatest president. He was the greatest social reformer. He was the greatest economist. He was the greatest renaissance leader. He was the greatest about everything that he has done. And not only in his time, but throughout time. No one has reached ever the level of greatness of from Muhammad SubhanAllah, look at the aspects. How could one human being be like that unless it is the ultimate design of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us how we ourselves can learn from Him and be the best people that we can possibly be? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was tasked of revealing the last word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the Quran, to all mankind. And was establishing the Muslim state, and fighting in battles, and facing oppression and blood, subhanAllah, he would come home. And no matter what it is, he would find one hour at least to converse with his wife, to talk to her, to increase the wood between him and her. If his wife was sick with all these tasks, he would do house chores for her. He would help her with her work. Prophet used to saw his door. He used to fix his own shoe. He used to milk his own sheep. He used to buy food from the market to his household. It is him, sallallahu alayhi wa who said, Khidmatuka zawjatuka sadaqa. To serve your wife is a charity that Allah subhanahu wa would reward you for it. No one had ever seen generosity like the generosity of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One time, a woman worked so hard to saw a, a god for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was like the tuxedo of its time. And gave it to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put it on. And the companions seen him coming out with this beautiful new suit like or tuxedo. And one of the companions said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, would you give me this? Prophet Muhammad did not even you know, say a word or why or he said, wait here. He went inside, changed, and came outside holding the new garb and gave it to the man. The companions were angry with the man. How could you possibly ask Prophet Muhammad with this new suit? And you know he never says no to anyone. He's the most generous man that ever lived. How do you take this new dress from him? The man cried and said, all I wanted is that I wanted to wrap my body with it when I die, that this would be my coffin that Prophet Muhammad wore it. A kafir, a Muslim came to Prophet Muhammad while he was standing. And Prophet Muhammad had some of his sheep. And the man wanted to test Prophet Muhammad He said, oh Muhammad, give me two of these sheep. Oh Prophet Muhammad do was he take it? The man could not believe it. he took the sheep and walked away and still Muhammad did not renegade his word. The man ran to his people and he said, Ya qawm, aslimu, fa inna muhammadan yu'ati ata'a min la yakshafa. You have to accept this land. This man is given like someone who has a limitless supply from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if he does not even fear poverty. Subhanallah. When Prophet was with the companions, to look, subhanAllah, even even his hadith, the beautiful hadith, hadith Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha fi sahih muslim, the Allah rafiqun yuhibbu rifqa fil abri kulli. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kind and gentle, and like kindness and gentleness and everything. They were sitting down with the companions, and a man walks in that they never seen before. If he's a Muslim, they would have known he was a Muslim. He was not a Muslim. And the man had a long travel. He was seeking knowledge about Islam, maybe he would accept Islam, and he wanted to urinate. He goes to the mihrab where Prophet Muhammad a prophet of Rasulullah and starts to urinate. SubhanAllah, imagine ourselves, someone walks in, that we know he's not a Muslim, and start urinating in the mihrab. He's a kafir, he came to uh, desecrate where the Muslims are, and insult Prophet Muhammad they wanted to beat up the man. Prophet Muhammad said, stop. Do not bother him while he's urinating. And he waited till he finished. And asked him to bring a, uh, a container to put water in. And 
They poured the water on the thing, made it clean, set the man down. This is Islam, this is what we believe in, this is what cleanliness is, this is what we do, and this is what we do not know. SubhanAllah, the man, seeing the difference between the reaction of the companions and then the manners, the great manners of Prophet Muhammad He said, Allahumma arhamni wa muhammada wa la tarhamdu lana ahada. From the kindness and the gentleness of Prophet Muhammad SAW. SubhanAllah, Prophet Muhammad would be walking and one time there was a cat that trying to drink some water from a pot that was high for the cat. Prophet Muhammad kneeled down, tilted the pot till the cat SubhanAllah drank the water and quenched her thirst and then continued walking again. Prophet Muhammad forbade his companions to have a standstill conversation while they're riding the backs of their horses. He said, In Allah, let me ajalakum shayatina ala the muhadin jihad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yielded an arm to you, do not abuse it. You want to have a conversation, you're not moving, you're not traveling? You have the conversation when you're standing with your foot, not on the backs of the horses. Mercy upon animals. SubhanAllah, you look at how Prophet Muhammad and his power with all that mercy and all that kindness in battle. If you go to Mecca and ask, Man fans of Fisad, people will tell you Ali ibn Abi Talib right there. This is Ali ibn Abi Talib describing the physical strength of Prophet Muhammad in battle. كنا إذا حمي البأس وحمرت الحضق نحتمي برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولم يكن منا أقرب إلى العدو منه. When people are dying left and right, فارس الفرسان علي بن أبي طالب used to hide behind Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and no one was ever closer to Prophet to to the enemy line, the front line than Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. The most physically powerful man in the Arab Peninsula. No one was ever loved by his companions like Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. SubhanAllah, this is one of the features that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in His Prophet. With His manners, with His love, you have to love Him. It was the companion that uh, one of the uh, Kufar Quraysh was torturing. You know, denounce that deed of Islam, denounce that Allah, Allah and come back to our religion and worship the idols and all that. And he totally refused till the man got exhausted. He said, all right, I'll let you go. I'll let you go. Just curse Muhammad for me and I'll let you go. He said, I'd rather die that curse from Muhammad The Kafir said, I've never seen any man more loved by his friends or companions like Muhammad is loved by his friends or companions. The ultimate wisdom and the ultimate knowledge of Prophet Muhammad but look at the manners. Look at Hadithi Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu. Lam ara rajulan akthara mashuratin la ashabi min rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And not only that he consulted with the companions. They're not prophets of God, they're not messengers of God, they're not the last prophet of God. Of the people. When Prophet Muhammad was at the battle of the trench of Khandaq, you know, the Kufar summoned the, the biggest army in their history, 10,000 warriors. And the Muslims were barely a thousand, 10 to 1. And they came to Medina to annihilate all Muslims till the end of Muhammad. And subhanAllah, Banu Quraysh are the last tribe of the three tribes of the Jews. Got with them and completed the siege around the Muslims. And they had the same goal till the end of Muhammad. So the idea of Salman al farisi was to dig a trench that is wide enough so no horse can leap over or go down and come up, up again. All around Medina. So they can save themselves. SubhanAllah, Prophet Muhammad is about 50 years of, 54 years of age. And the companion said, Oh Prophet, Allah will, they will do everything. He said, No, I'll share with you. What was the task of Prophet Muhammad? The harshest task. If they come to a big block or a big rock that no one can break, they would call the 54 years old Prophet Muhammad to break it. While they were digging, Prophet Muhammad is waiting for his turn. He found one of the companions with a quarter piece of chicken, small piece of chicken. And they were all starving. And Prophet Muhammad looked at him and said, What about your brothers? You're eating a quarter of chicken? That's a treasure of food alone. And the man apologized to Prophet Muhammad and he was so embarrassed he could not do anything but just lift his guard and show that he tied one rock to his stomach so tight so he combat the hunger that he was feeling. Prophet Muhammad did not answer him with words. He pulled his own guard and showed the man that he had two rocks tied to his stomach from the same hunger. 
and Prophet Muhammad SAW would go there and dig with his companions. But then we can speak for days about the features and the abilities and the manners of Prophet Muhammad SAW who said, إِنَّمَا دُعِثْتُ لِقُتَمِّ مَمَكَرِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ But Prophet Muhammad SAW did not come to planet Earth and to all mankind to display how great he was. He does not need us to certify that for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٌ عَظِيمٌ You are but with great manners. And subhanAllah, when somebody who is very rich, somebody let's say who has a billion dollars in the bank, and point to someone else and said, oh, he's so rich. That means that man has more than his money. But when somebody who has only 50 dollars in the bank and tell you, oh, that guy got money, then maybe he has a thousand or two thousand dollars. What I'm saying is that Allah subhanahu wa said that Prophet Muhammad SAW is great on the scale of greatness of Allah, not our own scale. Imagine how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and on the scale of greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet Muhammad SAW has great matters. So what are we to do about this? What we need to do about this is to fulfill the great hadith of Prophet Muhammad SAW that a lot of us subhanahu wa ta'ala pay attention to. Prophet Muhammad SAW said in the middle of 7th century, Seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim. What knowledge? How to tweet? How to use the iPad? No. Islamic knowledge, the knowledge of seerah, the knowledge of wisdom that Allah subhanahu had blessed us with His mercy in the form of the character of Prophet Muhammad SAW. If I learn the manners of Prophet Muhammad SAW, if I learn the purpose of the ahkam that Prophet Muhammad SAW put forward in how to deal and how to process his life, and I try to emulate him in my life, I'm doing nothing but empowering myself to be the most successful human being that could possibly be out there. We need to seek that knowledge. And subhanAllah, it's very simple things, but subhanAllah, they're so simple sometimes we don't pay attention. What is the difference in pay? in salary between the nurse and the surgeon. They both work in the hospital. They both work very hard to cure people and heal people. The difference is the know-how. Someone who makes a half a million and someone who makes 50,000. <coughs> What's the difference between the architect and the one who lays bricks? It's the know-how. The wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa sent to us with Prophet Muhammad SAW in every aspect of life is the know-how, how to process our lives, how to be not just good, not just better, but the greatest human being that we can possibly be. How would I know that? Look at the companions around Prophet Muhammad SAW. SubhanAllah, each one of them. SubhanAllah, there's nothing in the, on planet Earth right now that can even stand up to their heels. Why? They learned firsthand from Prophet Muhammad SAW and understood the worth of the knowledge of Prophet Muhammad SAW. How you explain to me when Prophet Muhammad SAW calls Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu and Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, two men, they don't have two armies with them, on their own. Anyone he asks him, go open the country of Yemen to Islam. It's not summon an army or get a billion dollars and try to open an entire nation to Islam, you too with your Iman, with the manners that I taught you, go open this country for Islam. And guess what? They went there and did open the entire country of Yemen to Islam. And they were not savages or primitive people, they were a country of culture. They were people of the scripture. SubhanAllah, 20 million people today in Yemen say La ilaha illallah because of these people. Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah ask about him before Islam. Like any other man in a harsh desert that nobody had ever heard of. Abu Awadah Jalal was the leader of today's Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, Jordan. All of them. SubhanAllah. Could you imagine that in one lifetime? But that's the power that you empower yourself with and enable yourself with when you start applying the manners of Prophet Muhammad and the features and the aspects and the character and the abilities of Prophet Muhammad in your life. SubhanAllah, when I went to Egypt, just to give an example from our own time, I'm an engineer by education, I'm an investment banker by profession even though I'm retired. So everywhere I go with the brothers in Egypt, they call me Dr. Mustafa, Dr. Mustafa, Dr. Mustafa. SubhanAllah, I'm an engineer, I'm not a doctor. And I know these are very conservative people, and they just don't make false claims like that. But when I started to get introduced to the brothers, I knew that they had the right to call me doctor. Guess what? Because everyone around is a doctor. All the conservative
conservative Muslim brothers who try hard to apply the manners of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one who doesn't have a PhD is an actual, actual physician, and the one who's not a physician is a dentist. All of them like that. And subhanAllah, when you look at it, why? When you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you take the garbage out of your life. You take the distractions out of your life. You take the harm out of your life and leave only the good thing. You don't watch TV, you don't play around, you don't listen to uh, uh, crazy songs, you're not uh, busy yourself talking on the phone, backbiting people. It takes all that and leaves you and focuses you and makes it so easy for you to improve yourself. And then when you memorize Quran, like Prophet <coughs> like asked us, SubhanAllah, you go out there and all of a sudden, all of them are eight plus students. And it's up to you, you want to be a doctor, you want to be an engineer, whatever you want, you want to have a PhD, it's so easy for them. And Allah, if they're great scholars of Islam, next to their PhDs in medicine and science and you know pharmacology and all that kind of stuff. They empower themselves. You took the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the best out of you. These are the lessons that we want to learn from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the ayah that we recited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, مَا لَمْ تَكُونُ تَعْلَمُونَ And He is there to teach you. What do I want to do with knowledge that I learned? Other than applying that knowledge. Do I know how to program a computer and code a great software program? Wouldn't I do one? Wouldn't I program one and make something better with it? If I know how to heal people, would I go out there and start paving streets? Or I would go and act as a doctor with the knowledge that I have? So what we need to do with the knowledge about the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad and Sirah is to empower ourselves. The more you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you empower yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah Al-A'raf, and I want to end with this so we can realize the whole message, so we don't miss the forest for the trees. It says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa yuhillu lahum al-tayyibat, wa yuharrimu alayhum al-khabaif, wa yadu anhum israhum, wa al-aghlala lati kanat alayhum. Everything that the Sunnah or the Qur'an or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message has said that is good for you, that is good for you because it's halal, and it's halal because it's good for you. And everything that is haram, it's haram because it's harm. It's almost the same word, and it's hurtful for you, whether you're aware of it or not. You obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're only benefiting yourself from the halal and protecting yourself from the haram. And that's why in Surah Al Anfal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, istajibu lillahi wa lirrasuli idha da'akum lima yuhiru. Who you believe, respond to the teaching of your Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders when and it is. An invitation for your renaissance, to improving you, to empowering you, to making you the best human being, to give you the tranquility that comes with obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshaAllah, put that seed in your mind. Pick a book of Sirah, subhanAllah. We have it in Arabic, we have it in English, we have it all over the place. And start to read for yourself. You have a, a subject that subhanAllah is bothering you, a problem in your marriage, a problem with your, with your business, a problem with your children, anything. Just pick up Fiqh Sunnah or any of the easy to read books and see what is the Prophet Sallallahu way of dealing with his wife, his children, uh, a business, trading, dealing, and get an idea, get a purpose of it. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will give you the solution. And most importantly, remember, لا راحة إلا في الطاعة And the ta'a is what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam showed us, what ta'a is, inshaAllah. So let's bring Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam into our lives, let's enrich our lives, let's get the blessing of Islam, let's empower ourselves like the early Muslims empowered not only themselves, but the entire world in Charles. Alhamdulillah ala amat al-Islam, Alhamdulillah ala amat al-Islam, Alhamdulillah ala amat al-Islami, wa kafir abiyah ala amat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa asri ala nisal fi khusr al-lazina amin wa amu al-salihat wa tawasaw bil-haqi wa tawasaw bil-sabri ala amat al-Islam. Oh.